have you decided on a Halloween costume? Are you going to go all out or are you just like, eh, I I'm have, tired. I have a thing. Um, I think it'll hopefully be kind of funny. It's, it's set in the Dune universe and I'm putting a twist on it. Mm. Um, I will think there be, be a funny. worm included? There could be some worm action. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, uh, huh, wink, wink. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to be the God Emperor. That would be hilarious, mm-hmm. but that would be impractical. Yeah. I'm going to have a system where I can go walk around easy, work in the costume, and then also have an add on that'll be wacky and ridiculous and really get the point across right. that I can have when I'm walking out on the street and you know, yeah. take pictures. For those of you who have never seen Eric go to his Instagram. I think there's no costume I've ever seen in the history of costumes that's better than Dr. Strange. Crunch Rap Supreme Doc- Dr. Strange. It's, it, it's the best. So you guys have to look at this. It's it's insane. I was very happy with that one. That one is still my pinnacle. It's going to take yeah. me a long time to to top the uh, silliness so, of that one with but the visual flair. The visual, the, the, the prosthetics, the realism of the, of the hands with the with the Taco Bell baked crunch wraps. Yeah. Oh, it's insane. It's, it was, it was truly genius. You know, like your video on YouTube got what, like 750,000 views or something like that. That one. Yeah. The Star Wars yeah. 1880s one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, that is still pushed off from making any more. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I will come back. You know, to it It's point. not easy, you know, trying to revive this channel and just like knowing Cause I did it with, you know, I did some, some reviews back in the day, of like gear and stuff, camera stuff and yeah. built the channel a little bit. It's like 3000, you know, people at this point, but it's like, I'm not, I don't want to do that anymore. The cigar bar thing was great because it was, uh, it was something that I just enjoyed doing and I could yeah, use my filmmaking. Sure. But the thing is at a, at a certain point in time, I just re- realized like, no dude, you make movies, you like, this is what you want to talk about, do that. So build this channel. So but the thing is, like, in order to stay relevant, to stay on top of it, to do all the things, you have to, like, you have to make a lot, make a lot of stuff, be present. Oh, so yeah. oh. when you have something like you had go, like, pop off like it did and go crazy, suddenly you're like, you have this obligation, you're like, oh, I got to, like, scoop up all the momentum I can. But that video took a very long time to make. So yeah. you're like, yeah, do I have to spend this much time? Stuff. Yeah. Like, so for a, for a quick thing for people... It blew up because I happened to drop it on YouTube right when that first iteration of like AI, um, oh, it's this movie but uh, set in the 50s or set in the 80s. Like it's dark like, fantasy Star Wars or what? Yeah, it's yeah. Ghostbusters, but by Tim Burton, like that kind of, yeah. or when there's like the Balenciaga, everything was Balenciaga um, mm-hmm. to Harry Potter. So it's when still image AI blew up. And so my thing looked like it, the thumbnail looked like it, and my title just happened to to sound like it. Mm-hmm. And so I rode that wave. Mm-hmm. And yeah, now I'm it's like at eight hundred and fifty thousand or something because it popped again when the video version of all that mm-hmm. swept through this last summer gotcha. or spring. Yeah. So yeah, but my problem is I'm not plugging things into a computer like mm-hmm. the AI people where you can just kind of bang them out quick yeah. i'm actually making stuff from scratch and filming and mixing live action with miniatures and and it's a ton of work yeah and i work all the time and yeah yeah once it became a job to make more of that content right. i was like oh i'm done yeah i only make this stuff because i'm free well it's the thing the it's if it's your job and it's your job that's great but mm-hmm. if it if it's a job to do it and there's no guarantee of it going somewhere, right. that makes it really hard to dig into, you know? Mm-hmm. So unless you just really love it to the point where you're willing to spend all your time on it that you don't have working, it's really hard to keep up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, I was just going to make a trailer. Of, mm-hmm. It was A New Hope, but set in the 1880s, a reimagining uh, the Jedi were samurai, samurai era just ended. The Empire is the British Empire. They're all over the world, blah, 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 blah. So that's mm-hmm. the setup. And yeah, I was like, okay, I'm just going to do a trailer. But then I was like, well, I still have to make every ship and figure out every location and figure out, you know, and do all the things so it's doable. 
Yeah. But it would have taken me like two years yeah. of all my free time, which is rare. And yeah, yeah that got really depressing. <laughs> well, and there's also, so there's a couple of YouTubers that I, that I follow who do more of the movie stuff and their whole thing is two, three videos a year. And they do, you know, a two hour, five hour deep dive into something, whether it's Star Wars or there's that one I sent you guys about the, the girl who did the deep dive on the, um, the Star Wars hotel. Right. And it's like five hours long or something crazy, but that's the only video she's put out in a year, but she has a million and a half, you know, subscribers. Right. So when you've got that level of project to work on, like that is your whole life, but it's just you, your talking head, your writing and your B-roll with what you were trying to do. You had to do the voiceover and the only B-roll was what you had, what you were filming yourself of building the models and the details and everything. So it's just right. like, and then that's just, that's on a different level of, of ambition, you know, to make like it work. The people that do proper tutorials and set a camera up over their head mm -hmm. and film themselves making things get like. I'm amazed just touching that mm -hmm. and making a tutorial, building a thing. And even then, I literally would make a step and then just put it in front of the camera and go, here was this step, mm -hmm. and then go away. And so I was barely filming still. And just even doing that, I was like, oh, this is a lot of work. Yeah. So people that are going through the entire build, being filmed, yeah, capturing, I don't know, 70 hours potentially of footage. Yeah. Just it's to make like a 10 minute yeah. tutorial yeah. and people just consume it and are like, cool, next, cool, yeah. next, click, good. There's a guy uh, who's actually, I think he's in Den he's in Colorado anyways, but boy like hobby time. And he just does models and, and dioramas and things like that. And usually it's like weekly and it's great work. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like just top tier stuff. But even that I'm sure... He's just like, can I make something for myself for fun? Yeah. You know, even well, though the guys got... are getting the tabletop miniature stuff. Yeah. That's what I yeah. was watching years ago obsessively and black magic craft guy and uh, a lot yeah. of other people, I think, yeah, hobby town or there's, there's a few people that have blown up, but yeah, that's my hats off to them. And I think ultimately when they start blowing up, they pretty much just have to go all in mm -hmm. because that's how much time it takes and that's their job. Yeah. And yeah. I guess they have a spouse that can float <laughs> and maybe some kids. Lapses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some yeah. do have kids. I'm like, yeah. whoa. 